Hill is everywhere right now. I think that it was very popular, and I think that the uh, craft field is never enough right now. So we have another great talk about craft field from Roman, and I'm passing my word to him. Thank you for the intro. Uh, hello, my name is Roman, and because I am visiting these meetups, and yes, there were quite a lot of craft field talks already. Uh, I think they were all focused more on the theory of GraphQL and why to use it, and how, but uh, so I decided to take it from the other side and like get our hands dirty. And what we're gonna do? We are actually going to implement GraphQL Server here, and we'll take it from the front end first because what happened to us? I worked with Beat, who was speaking before me. Uh, we are actually colleagues, and we had to go through this implementation of GraphQL on the front end because our backend guys have all their backend in Java and it would be too much work or whatsoever. So uh, what we're gonna do today, uh, I don't even have many slides, literally three. Uh, so th this is the first one, this is the second one, and uh, let's get things started, right? Uh, so what we're gonna do is because I can't actually show any code from our company because it's all confidential, I decided to uh, turn one of my older apps into GraphQL powered app. So this is the app that uh, I I built really like a few years ago. It's like an electron watcher. It watches hacker news stories where you can set like a threshold and it will like notify you when there's some a new interesting story there. I took this app and converted it into TypeScript, which we can see right here. And it doesn't work. Uh, give me a second. I'm probably not running something here. Oh, yeah. Right, this is it, right? And so this is the app. Uh, if you look at the network tab, that's the interesting part that we'll be looking at mostly today. So <coughs> this is so now. This is like some about page. And if I go back to the stories, you can see that I'm actually making many, many requests for each of these stories. So what I'm doing, what what's happening there is like I'm doing this first. Can you all see it actually? Is it big enough? I don't know how to make it bigger actually. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. This is like control plus or command plus. Oh yeah, maybe. Uh, but there's some idea, right? No, this is all that this is. Command plus, yeah, yeah. command plus. And focus the dev tools. Yeah. Focus the dev tools and yeah. then command plus. Command plus. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we have check keyboard, so yeah, I don't know how to do right. that. It goes to it goes to the first tab instead. Anyway. Uh, this will have to do for now. <laughs> so the first request, what happened is, is to top stories, which is like slash API slash top stories. And it'll give us uh, just numbers of those stories and then we have to make, initiate individual requests for each of those. This gets really, really slow when we are like on an even fast 3G network. Look, like if I go back here on to the uh, about page and then go back, click, it's like loading, 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 and now it comes back, right? So it takes so much longer. It would be so much faster if it was just one request, which is what GraphQL uh, promises, right? So uh, that's like an overview of the app. <coughs> Let's take a look at the uh, uh, folder structure or the project. So here, is this big enough? <laughs> I can make this bigger. Okay, so we are using, uh, we have like a model repo here. We have a server, which is actually written in Golang for this purpose. So just want to imitate the, this scenario where we can't actually touch the backend code. So we will need to build on top of that. So we have like a monorepo of three microservices here. So this is not a microservice yet, but we'll make it at the end of the talk. So this is the web that we, are built, uh, we have. This is the app that you just saw. It's basically a Next.js app with some pages, and this is the index page that's the most interesting one to us right now. So this is how it looks. So this is the home page, and now we are using a couple of hooks here. So the first one is use get. <coughs> use get basically just receives a string as an argument, and it will initiate the request on the background, 
you're using fetch, and what we get back is data. I'm just aliasing it here to top story IDs because I am then I'm using an, another one which is use gets, which is the same one but for arrays. So this way I can fetch all those stories, I get back loading or error, and then I'm just going to display all of them. Does it make sense? So if we want to turn this into a GraphQL app, what we need to start with is uh, typing down schema. So we are using YAM workspaces here, which helps us with uh, having this folder next to our real app, because we know that we'll turn it into a known microservice. That, that's why we don't even put it in the web folder, even we could, because it will be on the client at the beginning. But we are just separating it from the beginning, right? So here we gonna create schema. I cheated a little, so you can see that I already have all the packages downloaded and everything. But we're gonna type the schema now. And what I find easier to do is to open one of these stories. This is based, this is actually common, sorry. <laughs> I'll just take one of this and shove it in. And then this is the uh, this is the structure that we get back from one story. If I put this on, can you see it right? Yep. So here we'll be actually <coughs> typing the schema. So what we need to do is like type our story object, right? So the story is has like an author, which is a string. The explanation mark there is, uh, there is a non-level string. Same with in for IDs. Then we have kids, which are the comments. Then we have score, uh, time, title, and URL, which is optional string. And now we need to create a comment. Basically the same stuff. Comment ha can have replies, so that's, uh, that's what we saw before. Only one thing that is different is like if I take one of these comments, put it inside the URL, we get that comment actually doesn't have a title, but it has a text. So, so we get a <coughs> text and time. And now, because every GraphQL has to have uh, an entry point, this, that's called a type query. That's the entry point to a graph. So uh, we'll, the, we'll have top stories, which will return an array of stories. And then we have the story detail, which will either return a story or null if we can't find one. And also, we can add some arguments to top stories, like offset and limit for pagination. And that's it. So now we have the schema type. And what we do next is we're going to create our resolvers for that schema. Because every GraphQL schema executable schema. Right. <laughs> and that's basically an object uh, of, <coughs> of sorry, excuse me. So what you just saw is that I'm actually playing these macros. Do you know this VS Code plugin? So I can actually drink beer here and <laughs> smash it in, right? <laughs> so we are going to import this make executable schema from GraphQL tools, which is a function that receives type definitions, which is what we just wrote, and our resolvers object. We are not going to type anything here because we are hackers, uh, only the context, because I want to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, context, GraphQL context is a way where you, is a place where you store all your connected uh, objects to the database, for example, where you can fetch the stories. Because we are here, uh, but, but we are here only using a fetch, or like a get HTTP request, so we don't have any state. It could easily be imported, but I'm intentionally, pu intentionally pu putting it into the context, so it's easily replaceable from, uh, based on the environment, because we will change the environment from browser to node eventually, mm -hmm. right? And 
again, I'm just like smashing the keyboard here and it does what I want it to do, which is awesome. <laughs> Uh, so here, what you, see, what you see here, we are actually taking the logic that was on the front end, on the UI, and we are putting it on the graph below here. So what you get is actually a great separation of concerns in a way that UI gets simplified <coughs> quite a lot. And it ends up being just a function of projection of your data, which is what the React was designed for. So here we are making uh, the story resolver, which has skits, so we need, to we need to tell it how to fetch those comments for the particular story. Blah, 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 blah. And then we just copy paste this into a comment, because that can have replies as well. And this is no longer a story. Call the semicolon there, there. And now we just need to export the whole thing as our function that creates the executable schema. So we just built two things, right? We built the type definitions and the resolvers for those type definitions. Now we can get the schema out of it. Didn't you forget one of, one of the parentheses? Oh, yes, that's why it doesn't format. <coughs> now, so now it's nicely formatted and what else is there? So now we have these two things, and it, off we go to the front end side. I'm just gonna make this full screen and build this package real quick. Hopefully it will work. No, because we are missing some types here and here. <laughs> See, the macro doesn't work. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so now it's built. Now we have our package built. And we can use it from the website, uh, from the website, yeah? So we can close this down. And we'll go to, so next thing we need to do is actually create our Apollo provider, because we will be using Apollo for, uh, for the client side. So we'll import Apollo provider from this is actually me typing the code tonight right now because I <coughs> run out of macros. But uh, hopefully it will work. So now we need to create the client that we just create the function for. So the code graph your client, graph your client. Create executable And to import it as well. Isn't it an import? Yes. So I'm using this type. <coughs> uh, is there a typo? No. <coughs> Semicolon? <Semicolle? Yeah>. Anyone? <laughs> oh, this is a bad one. Anyway, I'll just carry on. What does it say? So now here we give it the client. And now we should be able to use our oh name import, thank you. <coughs> cool. And what's down here? Oh no, sorry, so this Apollo client actually receives uh, not the schema, <coughs> oh my bad, sorry. So we need to create the, we actually need to create the, the front-end client, sorry my bad, which will be our function, and we need to separate these. 
Um, hopefully, there is a microphone, right? <laughs> so we'll import Apollo Client in memory cache for caching the data on the front end. Uh, we can go into more details how these things work later after the talk, if anyone is interested or don't, don't have an experience with your Apple GraphQL. But basically what we are doing here, we are just putting these things all together in order to create the Apple client that will be used <coughs> for the front-end application. Here, uh, the link is the interesting part. We are using schema link which is basically receiving the executable schema and some kind of context. And that's the context that we were talking about, which is the fetch JSON uh, function. Like, if you look at it, it's just a simple fetch with some condition if it's over 400, it'll raise an error whatsoever. So now we can import this create client. And this should work now. So, what's next? So, once we have uh, this, this app should still work because we are, what we are doing, we are incrementally adding these things together, right? So, we shouldn't. We shouldn't care if we are adding the, the GraphQL query to the index page or all of them because let's, let's just add it for the index page now and then here we also have the detail for each story but we, won't care, we don't care about that right now so we, just, we only want to add it here. So that's the, that's the index page here and <coughs> basically we can delete all this code because that's using the HTTP GET request. And we'll import a use query from the React Apollo hooks package. Now we have, uh, basically, it, it, the, the API is very similar to our custom hooks for the HTTP query. So what we get back is data loading or error. And now we just need to initiate the query. We'll use GQL tag, which is for uh, typing the, it can actually then generate, because of this tag, it can generate the types out of the query. So this query will be named get top stories. And what we want from each story is like, uh, is an I, it's probably an ID in order to be able to route to it. So ID, then some title, URL maybe, or whatever not, score, that's the number on the left, and then the comments. From comments we just want the ID, that's enough. We can then actually create our custom resolver that will only return the numbers or the number of comments. <coughs> and then what we need uh, next is time and the author. If I save this now, I should be able to, uh, but the, the, the response is a bit different because actually I need to ask for top stories here. We put this everything inside of it like this and then top stories should then use and work via the GraphQL. You can see that it still does the REST calls, right? Because the GraphQL is on the front end. <coughs> what it does for us though, is that it helps us to separate the concerns between the UI and the data transformations. So this opens up a new, whole new world of abstractions. For example, this story here, uh, we don't, we don't know what, what data it needs, right? We, we just give it from the, top, from the top component. And that's a not a good practice, actually. Because, because we can use, with GraphQL, we have this new way of abstracting these data requirements through fragments. So if I create a fragment for the story, it will look like this. 
will be like fragment, story, listing, on story object. And then I'll just copy paste whatever is here. Oops. Like this. And now from here, I only I can see that I need ID for the listing of the story because you know React will complain if the, it doesn't have a key. So I'll just say I need one ID and then whatever the story listing needs. And I'll just put the story fragment down here. Yeah, and then it'll gonna spread out the data requirements, which is super awesome because if you have a much bigger app, you only have to update one file rather than two or three files in order to get the data that you, you're actually ask, asking for. So that's it. Uh, what do we do next? We could probably update the detail page for, um, for the GraphQL as well, but let's, let's, maybe, let's maybe create the, let's maybe put this GraphQL into its known microservice, right? So we can get rid of these multiple calls and actually save some bandwidth to us. So we are gonna use Express GraphQL for this. Everybody knows Express, right? So we can, if you go to this documentation, you can actually copy paste this guy and smash it into this guy. Like so. Now we need the schema, which is our function. And we also need the context, right? We talked about it. So, uh, let me change this. <laughs> And the context actually is the one that's typed down here by context. If I make this type, types could you tell me what the type is? What am I missing there, right? So I'm missing the fetch JSON function. So how does it actually fetch those data? Because it's doing those uh, get request calls, right? So what we gotta type hopefully correctly. So it's received some URL. And then uh, we just need to call the fetch. And I've already, because it's a microservice, you need to tell it like, hey, where is actually the, 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 the Golang REST API? So we do that by passing environment variables like so. So we have an API server host here. So we could just use that one, like this. And then we will just use the URL, but uh, because our next JS server is actually having its own backend, every, every request that you make from the front end goes to the, go to himself. So we need to proxy those things, like this one. If anything goes to API, proxy to whatever, and <laughs> Then when, if anything goes with GraphQL, then proxy to, again, we do this by setting these environment variables, like where the GraphQL server host actually is and whatnot. This is very important when you want to do like server-side rendering as well. So let's just carry on with uh, URL replacing. We just need to replace that API for just a slash because that's not how it's actually used on this uh, API C. But if I go to 0.43000 and slash API, it will just proxy to the previous one. That's why we are doing this. This is like a microservice architecture, but like whatnot. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to confuse you too much. Uh, so this should be enough, apart from we need to convert this to JSON. So we get like response. And I had a typo somewhere. <coughs> oh, 
pricing. Uh, they, should, they should do it. So if I'm gonna just build this server again, and I'll try to run it. Now it should run on port 4000. If we, if we go to port, port 4000 slash GraphQL, we should get Graphical, which is a GraphQL explorer. So we can ask for those top stories. And and we get a error because some comment obviously has a new level value there. So we need to update our schema and say that this text can actually be null. I don't know why, don't ask me. But that's what this error says. So let's restart the server, try it again. And now it, it seems to work, right? So now we just matched comments for all of those stories. And because these requests actually now happen on the backend, they are much faster than taking the older round trips for the front end, right? So what we have to do now, because now on the front end we are still using we are still using the GraphQL on the front end. So now we need to update our web to actually use the HTTP GraphQL endpoint. <coughs> <coughs> that will be very simple because we already have uh, we already we just need to update our client. That's why I was talking about before. So this schema link that's the local one, right? We're just gonna delete this one, all of this as well, and we're just gonna import create HTTP client or link. I don't know how it is. And that's from Apollo link HTTP. I will give it options. I think it needs a new URI, which is slash GraphQL, because we are again proxying everything to the right service. And what else is there? I think it needs a fetcher. So that would be just our isomorphic fetch function like so. Now if you refresh the page, <coughs> you can see that it only makes one request. And we are done, right? That's basically, that's how we turned a REST heavy front-end into using this uh, GraphQL endpoint. It has some implicit caching in it, so if I just go back, it'll be immediate and it doesn't even make that request. Right? I'll, I'll try to clear up the cache by refreshing from the about <coughs> page and now going back on the, on the fast G, 3G network. I don't know if it's doing anything. Oh, it's still loading the yeah. Okay, yeah. Anyway, this, this, this request only took uh, half a second rather than like those four, five, six seconds. I don't know what it was before. And that's it. Um, then we have some other things that we could look at. We already looked at fragments. Uh, what I could talk about is like uh, because you now you have a tight, now we have a tight uh, API. You can do also all sorts of stuff with it because, for example, we can auto mock the whole schema without it so actually hitting the servers. Uh, or the, the other server. So when we have, here we have our create executable schema. We'll take this. Save it into a variable. And then we can use this special function from called add mock functions to schema from GraphQL tools. And we can just call it with like this. Now if I restart the server again, this is, this is what you could probably do for testing, right? So you're just mock mocking the back, all the backends at once with one line of code. Now if I refresh this page, I want to read you, I'll just turn off the code thing. Now it's generating some random data from it. And you can modify this. You can actually put in some pseudo-random generator for so we all test 
don't get broken and you're always generating the same kind of stuff, but you're still not hitting the servers and you just mock all the servers with one line of code. Uh, what else is there? So we talked about reason, right? <coughs> but what I didn't tell you is that, oops, I need to turn off the mocking because we still haven't converted the detail page. But actually on this detail page, this component is, is a reason component. And the way you use reason from, uh, uh, the way you use GraphQL from reason is actually also very convenient. Because what you do with, what you can do uh, let me let me take a step back. Uh, so what you can do, like because we have this GraphQL, we can we can introspect GraphQL, right? That's what that's what that's what this is. You can see this is like generated documentation for our endpoint. Can everybody see this? So we we can actually ask that endpoint, like, hey, what are your what, what's your data? What's your what, what are your types? So we do that by introspection. I have a script here that's called introspect. And it will make initiate a query to the GraphQL endpoint and save it into a JSON file, like this one. And that's a long, long file, but only used for development to type check whether we are using the, the things in the wrong way or the right way. And this is very powerful because now we can actually generate the types for uh, for our query, like yarn types should generate all the types for these queries. Now I can simply, when I'm using this use query, I can just say, hey, I want a type for get top stories, or get imported from generated folder top stories. If I look at this file, this is what it looks like. And so we just saved our some, some typings for us just because our server is typed, right? Uh, you don't get that with REST. <laughs> and Reason actually has a PPX for, which is this kind of thing, uh, for GraphQL, where if you start typing these uh, fragments, for example, this is the common fragment. If I would do, I don't know if I can actually run DSB now, uh, probably yes, if I do, if I just come up with something, I don't know, uh, hello, which doesn't exist, it'll immediately tell me, it'll immediately tell me that hello doesn't exist on type common. See, you get it at, on compile time, even sooner than with what you get with GraphQL, because you still get this with GraphQL, but after generating the types again. Uh, and that's probably everything from me. Back to the slides. Uh, so this is after demo, just a little joke of my friend, and thank you for your attention. Coding is cool, isn't it? Do you have any questions, Roman? Yeah, you can find the repo on my GitHub, or just in here, you know. The JSON file with types is generated by Apollo. Yes, or like any kind of commission. Yeah. Yeah. There is a new tool actually. It's called GraphQL Quickly. And it generates even a port. Yeah, yeah, you can also generate the uh, resolver types for it, uh, whatever. Yeah. By the way, all the tools you use are somewhere in your repo? Yes, everything is inside the repo, even with the reason part, or, uh, yeah. Because I think that you used quite interesting tools and some money. That's, like yeah, that's probably like my favorite, edit. that's probably my favorite uh, stack right now. So, <laughs> you know, like, apart from the TypeScript part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I have a question. Over there. I have a question about, you are saving the generated types of the server. So, uh, are you if you are using it in production or some 
and where you get about the box code. Do you generate it on your own and then commit it to the we, uh, repo? We used, to, we used to commit it into the repository, but now we don't. We just ignore it and just regenerate every time we are trying to run the project. So every time uh, CI runs or anything it else? It does it as well, yeah. So it fetches from production, probably? Well, the because we are... You have it in one repository <coughs> both the back end and the front end? No, uh, the, point, the thing is that we don't have GraphQL uh, in a microservice yet, just yet. Yeah. This was just okay. an example how we can approach this. But we are still on the front end, so we are actually, we generate the JSON file from the actual schema file. Yeah. So we don't have a running server there. We can do that as well. Uh, yeah, thanks, very great talk. Um, I was just wondering, but probably you haven't tried it, uh, the reason part, which was the last one, was very nice how fast it was, right? You just changed the thing in the query, yeah. and it showed you the thing, but would this work if you had projects with thousands of files and hundreds of thousands of lines? Would it be so fast like this, or That's a great would, question. would you still have to fall back to the usual Apollo generating thing and regenerating schema and checking the thing? No, that's, that's a great question. I, I'm not uh, sufficiently uh, like... Uh, I'd like to take this one. Yeah, take, sure. I, I, take I, I, I talked to the, uh, to the Facebook guys at, uh, at a recent conf uh, last month in Vienna, and they said because their, their schema is gigantic, they, they pulled off the, the re reason PPX for now. They, they're, they're probably planning to do some optimizations. But it's still lightning fast when you compare it to what you get with TypeScript. I mean, to be honest, yeah, or flow. Yeah. But you know, you know the Facebook scale. That's not yeah. the project we are doing. They have five thousand types in their schema. <laughs> okay, uh, there is it. Thanks again, everyone.